getting the most out of every ingredient. That's the mark of a maker. The KitchenAid Blender Collection. Hello and welcome to the British Library food season, generously supported by KitchenAid. I'm Angela Clutton, my huge pleasure to be guest director of the 2020 food season with Polly Russell, who's the season's founder and curator for the three years the season's been running at the British Library. We launched the season this year in 2020 at River Cottage with a conversation between Hugh Fenley Whittingstall and B. Wilson. And we've taken advantage of being here to pre-record the event you're about to see with Gail Balderson, executive chef at River Cottage and Melissa Hensley, sustainability food race champion, best-selling food writer. We're going to be cooking up a few dishes and talking about all the different ways we can minimise food waste at home. They're going to be giving KitchenAid kit a little bit of a workout, and I really hope that you all pick up some tips you can use in your everyday life in the kitchen. Over to Gail and Melissa. Thank you, Angela. Brilliant. Welcome to our session. It is more taste, less waste. I think I know a fair bit about food waste, but this is the... The, 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 this is your empire, isn't it? This is where things do not get wasted. Yeah, well, I mean, it helps when we grow all our own stuff. You really don't want to see anything going in the bin. So it's, it's ultra important uh, that we use every last scrap of it. And that goes for veg as well as meat and, and all the rest of the ingredients that we use here at River Cottage. Uh, today, we've got a first fabulous ingredient and we can see it here on the bench. And that's a Romanesco broccoli. It's a wonder of nature. It's perfectly helixical under a microscope uh, and actually follows the Fibonacci sequence. Oh. Some mathematics facts for you there. Um, <laughs> and it's just delicious. And it is delicious. That's the main thing. So um, people often confuse it with a cauliflower. Um, it's actually a broccoli, very closely related, though, those two things. Uh, but it has, a, it has a much tighter head to it, so it actually retains the flavour much yes. better. Uh, and it doesn't have quite so much water in it as well, so that flavour really p packs through when you uh, cook it. So, so you won't get all that mushy, softy, soggy cauliflower stuff that no. people might be afraid of. But if you had a cauliflower, everything we're going to do with this, you could do, couldn't you? Absolutely. A, a plain old cauliflower works perfectly. Yeah, so I, I love a plain but old But this is a beauty. We do love a plain old cauliflower. Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the head, we're going to use the leaves. We've got yep. a couple of ideas, haven't we? Yeah, so nothing, nothing there is going to go to waste. It's all going to be in the, the finished dish. Um, but we are going to start with the centre of it. Uh, and that's really, you know, people consider that the star of the show, uh, but I really love the leaves. They're probably, probably one of my favourite parts. They can be eat, eaten really sim simply like spinach or any other greens, kale. Um, so we're just going to snip out the head there and we'll pop those leaves just to one side for a minute. I mean, that is hefty, isn't it? Yeah. So like same, same weight almost. Yeah, so normally that goes straight in the bin um, with a lot, of, well, a lot of chefs and a lot of kitchens. We just, we just throw that away. Um, I mean, worse comes to worse, you should put it in the compost and it can come back as an onion next year, but um, we like to use it all. It will be born again. Exactly. But, but this, this is just, you know, the, it, we're coming into the season of the, the hardy greens. We, we, we can talk through so many things. I'll, I'll do a little quick fire test on you as to yeah, what, what you might do with it. Yeah. All I would say is definitely don't boil it. Don't boil it. Stop boiling veg. No, nobody should boil veg anymore. <laughs> we'll put that on a t-shirt, shall we? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to just take the florets here and again, we're going to just nip around them and you can see those beautiful large um, flets, really beautiful. Um, with these, we're just going to split the slightly larger florets down in half. We're going to pop them onto a baking tray, like so. And we're going to Bake it. Bake it. Roast it. Roast Get it, it golden. So the beauty of roasting is it caramelizes all the sugars in the veg. Um, if you try and boil uh, Romanesco, it gets waterlogged. So all the water goes into that tight head and it becomes mushy like your grandma's cauliflower. And smelly. Well, maybe not your grandma's, but no. my grandma's. Um, <laughs> once it's on the tray, we're going to give it a quick season with salt and a little pepper. We're going to pop a sprinkle of black onion seed over the top. Now, this is just a dish on its own, pretty much. Ro cauliflower roasted black onion seeds with a squeeze of lemon. Absolutely Gorgeous. beautiful. But we're, we're not paid to do simple things, so we're going to do something <laughs> much more complicated. We'll take it to the next level. We will indeed. So, so do you think every time 
uh, our instinct is to boil, we should think, no, no more boil, roast. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So or even grill. Or even grill. If yes. you've got the last few or days of the, of the summer. Yeah. Or, grill yeah. or raw. Like, or, or don't cook it at all. Um, for me, boiling is, is an absolute last resort uh, and should be treated as so at, at all times. Um, <laughs> while that's in the oven, uh, we're going to get on uh, with the cauliflower rice. Should I do this? Melissa's I'll get this in get here. Okay. Thank you so much. That's okay. Just shove it in here, really, and get it all grated up. And, and I sometimes do do this with a box grater, but why use a box grater when I could use this fantastic kit here. Absolutely, save you, save the effort. A little bit of pulsing. Done, four pulses. Excellent. And that has transformed the Romanesca stalk. Brilliant. Great. Looks good. So what else are we going to put this in This would there? be good raw, isn't it? Sort of um, cauliflower style tabbouleh with some raisins and mint and parsley and so on. But what are we going to do? Are we going to fry it up a little bit? Um, I was going to do it raw, actually. Yeah, we raw. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's yeah. go for it. Because it's so fresh. Yeah, so you've got some parsley oh, and some fennel to, to put in there and a squeeze of lemon, I reckon, would, okay. be, would be good. Trust me over here, yeah? Yeah, I'll trust you to do, do okay. a little bit. Brilliant. And then what? What are we going to do with the leaves? So the leaves, we're going to start um, something that we like to call everything from the garden barges at River Cottage. Love a bargey. And we all love a bargey, um, but this uh, is slightly different with the fact that we fill it full of lots of veg. So we're going to take these leaves and we're just going to take the frilly bits. Now this base here can get used again, so we can slice that and blend it just like Melissa's done with the end. Uh, it just needs a really thorough wash if we're going to use that base because it's right next to the ground and right next to the root. Mm -hmm. So with these leaves, we're going to start from the thick uh, stalk end and we're going to finely slice those stalks. These pickle really well. I don't know whether you've ever pickled them. Love it. Yeah. Uh, th to be honest, is there, you probably know the rule, if there is a rule when it comes to pickling, is there anything you can't pickle? <laughs> um, no. Veg -wise? I, I, well, veg fruit wise, black, I've been pickling my I mean, blackberries. You can't pickle potatoes, I don't think. But, no. um, yeah, fruit and most veg will pickle really, really nicely. A great way to preserve if you've got a glut of stuff as well. So this now, like I said before, will fry up a bit like spinach or kale. Um, again, a lot of people, even when they use the leaves, they'll throw those big ribs away, um, which I think is a real waste. And if you're really into the to your food, you can lacto-ferment those ribs. Um, Ooh, yeah. And they are really, really, really amazing if you do that. Do so. you think people are, I mean, I know fermenting is, is not a new thing, but do you think in, in 2020 and beyond, 2019 perhaps, people are much more interested in it. Will you, will you write it on menus and in your workshops? We're going to ferment today, and this is fermented. So it's a drawer, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So we've just written a book on it. Um, oh, there so, you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's, it's become much more prevalent, and uh, people are generally much more into their food, uh, and fermentation is really up there with um, what people are interested in. And it just, it, it just makes things, it gives that umami boost to everything, yes. doesn't it, if you ferment it through. Um, and it's also incredibly good for us. Mm. I mean, we get better fits out of it. And I also think it really pulls together leftovers. So if you're, especially in the winter months, when you just feel like everything feels very cooked or, oh, I've just roasted some veg and I've got to have that, I've got to re-warm up some soup, that having that topping of that sort of sharp acidity, that crunch is so nice, isn't it? Absolutely. And I think that the first thing we normally ferment in the year are the wild garlic seeds. Yeah, so that, and that gives you a taste of the spring whenever through the year. And it's a real, like I say, when things are a bit grey and miserable, you can pull out those spring walks almost. It reminds me of that time of year, which is, which is great. Trip down memory lane. Okay, Indeed. so what's next? So uh, we've got some spring onions from the garden, which we're going to chop down. So obviously a traditional bhaji would just use standard onions, but there's nothing standard about what we do here. So this is going to give it a really nice... <laughs> Um, I love it. And all your names as well make it so much more exciting. <laughs> Everything from the Garden Bargy. Yeah, exactly. So, Have it, you ever made the same... Do you think you've ever made the same dish twice? Obviously, when you're recipe testing, because I know you're very good at that, but that's the, free, um, that's the joy, isn't it, when it comes from not wasting, is sometimes I think people think, oh, leftovers, like, oh, I've got to use that up. But actually, I feel rather than thinking you're being restricted, you're actually... The world is... Is, is opened up to what you can do with it. Absolutely, it makes you way more creative. And even if you use the same ingredients, when you grow it yourself, mm. those ingredients aren't the same every time. No. So you, a carrot today is very different from a carrot in October yes. uh, and a carrot in November. So My October 2020, no, sorry. Yes, my summer 2020 courgette, yeah. while bigger, yeah. much more tasteless than last exactly. year. Exactly. So which, which is frustrating. However, I now know what I need to do to boost it with everything else. Yeah. So I mean, 
normally the bigger the veg, the, the less they taste of, mm. um, is, is the rule of thumb. We tend, tend, tend not to grow really big veg, that's for shown at the county show. Um, and as a chef... Best of Surrey. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we're not, we're not massively interested as chefs, so we like to pull things quite young. And that's all to do with sugar, essentially. Yeah. So, so we all love sugar. Um, and although we shouldn't eat added sugar, we do need natural sugars in our mm. diet. Um, and those are really prevalent in young vegetables because those mm. young vegetables are still trying to grow. And when plants are trying to grow, their energy is stored as sugar. And when they're not trying to go, it's stored as starch. Yeah. So obviously there's a massive change in that. So. And what's going on here? When you pick these, what's, what's the fennel doing at this stage? So that fennel's just gone to seed. So it's finished its flowering stage. And those seeds are, are, are ripe now. Mm -hmm. uh, and the next stage okay. of that life would be to dry out. We're, we're all quite uh, familiar with dried fennel seeds, uh, but green Delicious. fennel seeds still have that sweetness, so there's still fruit at that stage. Uh, so Lovely in a pudding. Absolutely delicious in a pudding, yeah. And, but good for savoury alike. Uh, and biscuits and cakes, amazing in mm. as well. So, um, Would that be good in a carrot cake, do you think? I've got delicious. a really nice parsnip carrot cake. Carrot, That'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, carrot and fennel works amazingly together. Okay, so your beautiful uh, carrots, your yellow carrots, your orange carrots, spring onions. Yep. And that is the uh, Romanesco... Leaves. Shredded leaves. Yeah, and, and then, that was all of them, right? Gosh, yeah, that's gosh, all the how leaves. How much there is there? Yeah, so you know, this is a good, this is a good amount there. Will, once they're all made and fried up, it'd certainly feed a family very generously. Uh, the next vegetable we've got is one of our all-time favourites: is chard. Um, if you haven't grown veg, grow some chard. I mean, it's pretty easy. Throw it in the ground, it grows. And how beautiful pickle the le the stems. Exactly, and also if you're just interested in garden for its colour, you can mm. have veg and colour at the same time. So they're a kind of a, flowers. Exactly. <laughs> so they're kind of an ornamental as well as being a delicious vegetable. And they're really lovely raw too, aren't they? In it, a salad, especially it, exactly. when, again, just thinking about maybe we're blessed today, but with the weather, but thinking about um, the months and months to come. Yeah. Um, how like I know lots of us miss the salad feel. So yeah. young winter leaves like the chards, the spinach, the beetroot leaves. What else could be quite nice raw? I mean, um, we talked about a few things raw here. Romanesco. Well, uh, you touched on courgettes earlier, your big courgettes. I mean, they're, they're beautiful raw, mm. um, ribbon down on a peeler. Um, so you just peel the whole thing into a bowl, squeeze of lemon, they're a salad straight away. Yeah. So they're, they're one of our... eaten straight away, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, and normally we, we'd mix a bit of fennel in that as well. Uh, and fennel is absolutely delicious raw. Um, so we, we, we tend to, you, could, you can eat raw kale as well. I mean, kale is yes. absolutely delicious. Maybe we'll delicious. massage some in a bit, little bit. Yeah, and uh, yeah, raw kale salads, absolutely, and amazing for our digestive systems as well. We're going to mix all that veg together. You can see we've got some pretty nice bright colours in there. And the last bright colour we're going to put in there is a red onion. Uh, mm. That's just going to add just an extra flavour. And the red onions are just a bit sweeter than their white counterparts. Um, and we're just going to finely slice that. I can't talk to you when you're going fast. Oh, okay. Well, um, you can, you can teach talk to me when I'm going fast <laughs> if you want. I love a raw leek. My mum, one of my mum's favourite salads is, is um, she makes a fabulous slaw and just loads of leek in it or French beans and, and tomatoes and, and leek. For people that don't love red onions, yep. would you suggest maybe they do a light pickle, a little squeeze of, of vinegar or lemon to get them into it or just use a bit less? Yeah, or just leave use, it out. Or leave it out. I mean, these are called everything from the garden barges because you can use yes. everything from the garden yes. and they'll still be really delicious at the end of them. Yeah. So, Because um, the that's, that's a good one, isn't it? I often feel like, not that, I mean, you know when you go around, when you go around to people's mm -hmm. houses, do you get roped into cooking? Oh, all the time, yeah. Right, yeah. okay. So then, then do you find yourself going, oh, let me have a little look and you see like half an onion on a plate yeah. and I'm like, okay, well, let's use that one. We don't need to start a new one. Exactly. That's a good, good exactly. chance to use up I mean, um, I, some bits and bobs. I'd always look in, in the cupboards and fridge before dinner preparation yes, so yes. you can actually see what bits are flo floating yeah. around. And one of my favourite dinners is bubble and squeak. Me so just too. All, the, all the leftovers fried up yeah. with, with a poached egg. I always do delicious. a Friday fritter. So yeah. whatever, something like this actually, exactly like this and, and, and flavoured up. Okay, looking cool. gorgeous and beautiful. So in there, we're going to throw some ground coriander, um, some turmeric, uh, curry powder, don't sting on the curry powder. You should always buy a really good quality one. Mm. Um, there's a world of difference in, in quality of curry powders. Uh, so find one you like and, uh, and it and always... keep it well in an airtight container, exactly. right? So spices should always be considered uh, as fresh food. Yes. Um, and if you can buy them a little bit at the time, it's so much better. If you can, if you can get them uh, from a shop in bulk and just pop them in your own jars, um, so much better than the little pots you can get. Some brilliant refill shops 
especially my way. Have you got some good ones down uh, here? Not so many down here, but yeah, yeah, I know the ones you mean. Yeah. Um, in London and, and Birmingham, especially, there's some great shops that you can get uh, wonderful spices in. Uh, to finish that, we've yeah. also got a really interesting uh, flower. So we've got some English yellow pea flower. So, Ooh, yeah. so traditionally a bhaji would be made with gram flour, but uh, uh, we, we can't get English gram flour just yet. We will be able to next year, um, but it's not available yet. Uh, this pea flour actually though, it tastes much more of actual peas than gram flour. Can I have a sniff? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So yep. it actually is a flavor in the bhaji rather than just a binder. Um, it's that, an extra boost. It is an extra boost of flavor. So that's gonna go in there and we toss all the veg in that so it coats it with all those spices. And if you had a wetter veg, yeah. just add a bit more flour. Uh, that's fine, so we're going to add a bit of water to this anyway mm -hmm. uh, to, to form the batter. So if it's a bit of wet veg, it's kind of doing a job for you, um, actually. And, you know, it will be flavour rather than just plain water. So That's it. So now we've got a bit of cold water in there. We're going to give it a, a mumble around, and that will just form a batter around the veg. And you don't want it to be too stodgy because then you get a really heavy, stodgy bhaji. And we've yeah. all had one of those from an Indian takeaway that, you know, is the size of a, a tennis ball. Uh, and a bit raw in the middle. And um, then when you get a light crispy one, it's just like so, heaven, isn't it, yeah. to bite into? So, so what are the, the so you're saying uh, the things to look out for are having a feel. It's like, you know, obviously get your hands in, feel yeah. when it's about right. And will you do a little tester one? Yeah, we'll test one in a minute. Mm. Um, just as we're heating the oil up, we can pop one in and just see how it's holding in that, um, in that oil. Uh, the secret really is you, you want as little flour in there as possible because we're not trying to make a cake. We're not trying to make something that's really stodgy. Um, so as little flour in there as possible, you'll make a good bhaji. Last thing is obviously we need to season it. So good pinch of salt. Gorgeous. Have you ever put fruit in a bhaji? Yeah, you can put some apples in here or some yeah. pears would go really nicely. Yeah, absolutely. Or some dried fruit. But we're going we're gonna to use our fruit, aren't we? We're yeah. going to make a lovely little luscious chutney on the side. So that mixture's ready to fry, so we're going to pop it to one side, and then we're going to check back in on that Romanesco, which I can smell already in the oven. I think you've timed it perfectly. I think not far off. So we can see now that it's, that it's yeah. roasted. Um, it smells really nutty now it's mm, come out of the oven. You can smell um, those onion seeds. Yep, so that's, that's looking really beautiful. Um, so we're going to start finishing our, our dish with that. I'm going to pop some oil on ready to fry those barges start heating that up and then we're going to get this Romanesco on the stove and make a sauce uh, to go all the way around it. So in that sauce we need an array of spices. So this is our next set of ingredients. You can see there we've got some, we've got some dried fennel seeds rather than yep. the fresh ones that you've been using there. Got we've got some cumin, cumin seeds. seeds, yeah, more curry powder, turmeric and black onion and some tomato passata. Beautiful. Um, and then a little bit of tomato puree will be needed just to thicken the sauce at the end. So before we do anything, we need to toast the spices. Yes. We always toast the spices because that doubles the flavor at least. And do you feel that if, if we're honest, sometimes we've got spices that are quite old, that if we give them that toast, it does, we it, do that, we can definitely get more out of them, can't we? Yeah, we, you'll always get more out of spice by tasting them, definitely. And it's a, it's a, a step that gets skipped quite often. Mm. Um, and it's a shame really because it really it makes all the difference between it, between the flavors. So I'd always recommend toasting those spices. We've got a pestle and mortar here, so we're going to bash those spices once they've had a little toast. Mm -hmm. I can do that. You can trust Excellent. me with that, Gal. I can trust you with that. It's very heavy. <laughs> Come on, Gal. <laughs> yeah, get the muscles out. Um, and any uh, have you got any favorite spice mixes, spice combos that you love? Are you a harissa man? Do you love a Ras yeah. Al Hanou? I, I feel like they're such a good way of when you find a spice brand you love or a shop yeah. that's selling them is, that's for me the easiest way to change up leftovers and change up a soup from staying the same and all like making a lovely spiced butter yogurt, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's, it's spice is a great way to make veg more interesting and appealing to people. Mm. Um, merguez is one of my favorite. Oh yeah, so nice. Ca coriander, caraway, cumin and chili with a bit of paprika in. And you can jazz it up with some fennel and other bits and bobs. Yes. As long as you've got that as a base, there's always a jar of that in the cupboard. Yep. Um, generally just, my uh, partner normally gets out and just smells it and puts it back 
because she just loves the smell of it. So, oh, uh, what? Yeah. As a sort of uh, yeah, just a, a as a little, boost, yeah, as a little instead of a coffee in the instead afternoon, instead of a coffee in the afternoon, <laughs> a little smell of Mergo spice. Oh, that's nice. Um, but it's a great, it's a great way to liven not only veg but fish and meat as well. It just, I just feel like eggs and a sort of Mergo tomato sauce shakshuk Ab style would be wonderful, wouldn't absolutely it? Absolutely wonderful. So, mm. I mean, that kind of area of the world, sort of North Africa, uh, kind of that kind of yep. med sort of area, has a great spice heritage. Um, so, if you just look around that area. Uh, there's some great recipes and, and, and great spice uh, mm. spice uses. I, I, one of the things I'm trying to do over uh, this year is, well, I like buying food for people anyway for their yeah. presents, but buying them spice kits, especially something that they might always think, oh, do I, will I give it a go this year? And I was like, this is the year to try a new spice. Yeah. Like last year, I feel like we all completely, if we weren't already in love with Har Harissa, it was like, yeah. I feel like the spice blend of last year. But uh, a Ras Al Hanu or a, um, and also, we'll talk about green herbs and some like a zoog and a chimichurri, all of oh, these amazing chimichurri ways. Chimichurri and chamula as well. Another, chamula another, is a great another shout. Favorite. Yeah. yeah. Probably my favorite way to eat mussels with a spoonful of chamula and cream. Um, just I brings, not them, done that. brings them completely out, just takes them to Bit the of different. lemon in there, the preserved yeah, lemon. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Absolutely, absolutely right. gorgeous. So, well, I what we're doing with this one. Here. So, so that, those spices are going to go into uh, this cauliflower. We're going to turn it into a curry. So yes. we're going to have the barges, we're going to have the rice and the, and the, uh, and the, uh, the Romanesco curry. Um, we pop the, the same pan we've uh, cooked the spices in. We're going to drop a little bit of light oil in. And then when Melissa's given those seeds a bash, we're going to just pop them in and fry them for a minute. And you should fry your spices when you're cooking with them. Again, boost that flavor. So we're all about just adding flavor to to those seeds at each step. Mm -hmm. As opposed to at the end, right? And as opposed to at the end. Is, yeah, that, is that a bit of rust? That's brilliant. That right? Yeah, no, I like, a, I like a sort of almost a bash to the spices. I like spices. to bite into something. Yeah, yeah you, get, like, you get that, that little pop as, as, you're, um, as you're going through, the, through your meal. Mm. Um, so they're going to go in. We're going to pop the black onion seeds in whole. I, tend to, I don't really like to bash the, the onion seeds. I think um, they go a bit dusty uh, and they're yeah. nice, nice to eat whole. Uh, so fry that, and not only do we fry the spices, we fry the powders as well. So we're going to go in with a, a curry powder, and we're going to fry a nice amount of that. Do you grow many chilies? We do grow many chilies, yes. We have a whole tunnel full of chilies. Um, and there's some insanely hot ones. Adam, Adam our head grown, gardener's grown Did some. Did he trick you? One day. Well, he, I think he was planning on, and then he let it slip that he, he, he'd grown a Carolina <laughs> Reaper up there. Um, so now I won't trust him with anything, because oh. those things are deadly. But um, I was going to say, my mum, my whole life, my mum's got this this uh, chilli oil that I keep meaning to like turn into my new business idea, but I call it mum's chilli oil, and she uh, has made it forever in order to be able for people, when you're cooking as a family or for cooking for anyone that doesn't love heat, to be able to spoon their chilli oil on instead so that you can you know, keep yeah. it... Um, and yeah, I've been trying to grow some chilies at the moment. So and then, but yeah, pickling them a little bit. And, and what would you do with your? Chi do you ever make chili, like chili jams and so on to add? Well, we do. Uh, we tend to use them quite quite quickly. Yeah. Obviously, you know, we're very busy here. Have lots of guests. Mm, um, but the, 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 our favourite way of doing it is if we salt them slightly, cut them in half, and salt them uh, for about two hours, and then you wash that do you salt seed off. Them, no, no, leave the seeds in. Great. Um, then let them dry overnight once you've washed the salt off. And then we put them in the cold smoker, smoke them overnight, and then we dry them out in the hot cupboard uh, until they're completely dry. So we have wow. the, almost like a chipotle feel to, to them. But our own, our own brand of chipotle chilies. If we didn't have our own smoker, could we put them in a low oven and sort of, could we, yeah. could we do anything dehydration wise or a little grill of them? Yeah, you're just trying to get that. Um, get the liquid you're out. Just, and just trying to get the liquid out, exactly yeah. that. So. So I've just popped some tomato passata in there. And we're that just, smells heavenly. Yeah, so it's a really quick curry, this one. It's not a, a long-winded, all-day job. No. Nope. Um, so we just get that on the heat, and I'm going to swap those pans over so I can get that oil heating up. Mm, I'm going to give that curry a little season. Also, going to grab that ro half a lemon that you, you've, you that may. you've got there. Thank you very much. More taste, less waste. Indeed. And um, then so this is Romanesco three ways because we've got the uh, we've got the Romanesco stem taboule here. Yep. Which uh, was a lovely easy job you gave me where I mixed that in with the parsley and the lemon juice and some salt. We've got the quick curry, but I love that you roasted it. And why are you recommending that people roast it first to 
So you just get that Super little flavorful. bit of caramelization on the yeah. outside of it, and it just boosts again. It boosts the flavor. Um, if you again, if you boil that in the in the sauce of the curry mm. for that, it would just leach all the water out and go I quite, it. It, and it would break down and become mushy. Yeah. You can roast it to right to the point that you need it, yes. uh, and then just fold it into that sauce, and that's pretty much ready. So we're going to just leave that. Gorgeous. Because um, you know what I like to do, Gav? On a Sunday is like my main. I've got a bit of energy yeah. cooking day. Obviously, you cook every single day. Yeah. <laughs> but when I've got the oven on, I like to do as many trays as possible. So yeah. I'll do something like that and then I'll keep it in the fridge ready to go. And then on a Monday night, yeah. it's, it's a quick turnaround, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. I've basically cooked it ready to go. So those few florets left over, yes. prime for a salad on the next day. Yeah. Um, I love yeah. A, a, yeah, a roasted cauliflower salad, one of my favorites. Um, so I'm just going to grab us some tasting spoons for, in a moment. What, what do you like in your cauliflower salad? What are you putting in it? Um, well, I, I love a bit of preserved lemon, and actually, mm. we're talking about that, well, you could preserve these lemons now. Yep. You squeeze them, pack them into salt, and, and, yep. and keep them in the fridge for a couple of months, and then you get that preserved lemon mm. out the back of it. Um, but I love a piece, a bit of preserved lemon uh, and some, um, and just some veg, some carrots, some onions, a bit like a tabbouleh, lots of mint, that kind of stuff. A couple of raisins. A couple of bit of dried fruit as yep. a, is a must in a cauliflower salad. Um, and, you know, if you want to go really sort of simple, just some chilies and lemon and cauliflower, mm. like absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. So we're going to bring that bargy mix back into the, into the fold. It's time to sit, hasn't it? Yeah, so you would notice it's, it's kind of dropped down into the bowl from where we were before. And we're going to, like you say, we're going to do a little tester just to see that it's bound enough and that oil is getting hot enough. You can see we've got a nice sizzle on the oil. Mm -hmm. And that's holding perfectly. So we're going to get on and fry enough for us to eat. Lovely. So you don't smash it together in your hand. You want it to be loose-ish, but just bound slightly flattened balls so they cook quick enough to get the middle um, nice and crispy. This would be excellent thinking about bubble and squeak. If you're, if you've had, if you, yeah, I'm 35. I've had bubble and squeak every yeah. single Christmas and, yeah. and basically every Sunday in winter. This would be an excellent way of changing it up, wouldn't it? Yeah, really. Some shaved Brussels sprouts in there. Do you like Brussels sprouts? I love Brussels sprouts. I don't yeah. like them boiled. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that. Yeah. If you come around my house, I'm not <laughs> even getting any, any no, I pan and water out. But uh, Brussels sprouts, do you know what I love? Roasting them and, and a little bit of miso is really fantastic. Oh. The company that you mentioned that make the split pea flour, the British Pulse Pioneers, they, they do really fantastic miso-esque umami flavoured yeah. Yeah, so paste, do, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do make it out of fava beans. That's yes, it, yeah, fava so, beans. So it's it, is, mm. it is like a British miso. I yes. think, I think yeah. I'm not... I'm not we can call it that. Yeah, I think, I think, I think, that, yeah. I think I'm brave enough to call it that. Uh, they also do a great one out of uh, split peas as well, which is actually a bit more miso-esque than the fava bean one as well. Because you think it's, it, if, if you blindfolded yourself, you could... Yeah, you could. Yeah, it yeah. takes you straight, yeah. straight to that. And that, for a little bit mixed into any soup that's lacking... Because what I want to just ask you... I might ask you now, because you've yeah. got quite a few bargies to make there. Yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> going to make enough for us today. Okay, and just then, enough uh, for us. But yeah. um, what would you keep? Okay, so as well as your spices and like your merge spice mix that you keep to hand, what else would you recommend that's, that doesn't cost too much, um, that just adds so much flavor in such small quantities? So I would say something like this, uh, a properly fermented miso, traditional Japanese style, or our friends with the fava bean paste. What else is just really worth having to just add oomph to stuff? A, a jar of kimchi. Is jar a, of kimchi is, is great. An absolute must for me. I yeah. Mean, it, it it goes in everything. I you yes. literally you try. I de, I, I end, we we make something called kim chop, which we we, we chop up the kimchi. Oh, lovely. Into a, into a smaller uh, grade. Um, and it is. How, how big is your kimchi to begin with? Well, we make. This we is the one you make. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah, we yeah. normally so traditional kimchi is quite big, the leaf in it, but we chop it down. It yeah. And it works slightly quicker as well. So yeah. To turn it around. So um, could you could you kimchi up this this guy? I've never have, but I don't see any reason why that wouldn't kimchi up perfectly well. Yeah. It probably it probably work as a kraut as well. Yes. Um, a bit along with the sauerkraut. Yes. Route. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it certainly has the right texture. Um, oh, lovely. So. so you would add kimchi to. Um, just your brunch, your eggs. Abs eggs is an amazing one for yep. kimchi. Yeah, uh, I tend to like blending it into butter and put it on fish as well. Works oh really, gosh, really I've nicely. Oh my I've never done yeah. that. Kimchi yeah. butter on some fish. Yeah. yeah. Any roasted veg, because I feel like I'm thinking about all the things that I do, and then um, I get to the point and I go, or my boyfriend might go, oh my gosh, another tray of roasted veg, and it's all <laughs> these things that we think about because it is such an easy way of doing it, isn't it? Because we don't boil, yeah. we roast. So, you know, yeah, so a simple, you could make simple fritters and then put like a kimchi mayo on top, exactly, kimchi yeah. butter. Yeah. What else? So, um, what else do you love? Well, Any I other love paste that you keep in there? What's well, in your fridge? Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Um, but homemade, obviously. Um, obviously. Yes. Obviously. And I've also 
worked out how to make a really nice squash mayonnaise, which is vegan as well. Um, so you use this. Hang on a minute. You so you're not talking about aquafaba. You're talking about you're using yep. squash to create that. Yeah. So you use squash as, as the binder as the egg yolk as the almost. No, you haven't. Yeah. So you actually. Are you allowed to reveal this to us? Right, you want to save that I for just, a book? I just have. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you the recipe. But <laughs> I'm going to call my agent. Try yeah, and get yeah. uh, a squash mayo. What? Yeah. Like, what? I still yeah, so don't get it. I was actually so what, trying. How do you get it out of the squash? So like, you, ro you roasting it. So you roast the squash, yeah, and then you puree it with a bit of garlic. And then you, uh, and with that puree, is really tight and goes yeah. quite starchy. If you get the right squash, like a crown prince. And then you add um, a little bit of vinegar or a squeeze of lemon juice and a teaspoon of mustard. And then you bring it out with your oil uh, in a blender and it turns into. Oh my mayonnaise. gosh, sounds amazing. I was actually trying to make something else when I made that. What were you trying <laughs> I was to try make? I was trying to make a, a squash ketchup. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, I love it. I love it. It was a surprising find. It was, and, I, and I, uh, the, the ketchup wasn't quite right, so I tried to emulsify some oil into it to make it a little bit more creamy. Yeah. And it turned into mayonnaise, and I was like, oh, hang on a minute, squash mayonnaise. That and then you don't need amazing. to use anything too too complicated. Absolutely, it's, uh, and it's just getting more veg in. Yeah, you know? exactly. So um, I'm, I'm always a fan of when something that's been, you know, a vegan version of or a veggie version of, I, I'm like you, I eat everything, but if you can get a, veg, a vegan or a veggie version that doesn't use a complicated ingredient, let's yeah. say, and uses your veg, then you're taking off all the boxes of not wasting you're getting more veg in yeah all so, of these things i mean veg is That's obviously great. a massive part of our lives here our last uh, cookbook much more veg was um purely vegan although it doesn't really say it in big letters yeah um whereas our first veg book had a lot of dairy and cheese and stuff in it yeah. um so i've spent quite a lot of time um cooking vegan food over the last few years uh, as well as various other things that we do um but it's, it's the most inclusive way to cook for people because you know virtually everybody's going to be able to eat what you yes. cook. So it's, it, it's a way I, I feel is really nice to, yeah. to cook for people. Um, I agree. I agree. And then, and then, so what are your, because I think that's really interesting is when people are thinking I've got to cook for my friends with different dietary requirements, mm. sometimes that I feel is the moment where you create more waste because you're getting so many options yeah. and buying so many ingredients because you're trying to keep everyone happy. Yeah. You often end up with more waste, yeah. uh, which is then yeah. frustrating and you end up feeling guilty. So yeah. what have you got? Because you said you've been experimenting a lot. Yeah. Have you got any things, the things we shouldn't waste our time trying to do to please everybody and things that we could do instead? So like that squash mayo, yeah. where, rather than make two different mayos, just, make just make one squash, squash mayo. mayo. Yeah. I think yeah. The, the thing um, that people are scared of the vegan word because yeah. it does a little bit hark back to a, a time where that food wasn't particularly interesting. It was a bit grey. I was brought up as a vegetarian, so I didn't eat meat till I was 16. So I have quite a lot of experience with this as a, as a child as well. Um, I think the thing is, if you make it really tasty and don't tell them it's vegan, mm. they, they're just like, this is brilliant. This mm. is great. And then you go, well, actually, you haven't eaten any, any kind of protein today, the animal protein today. Um, I've done a banquet for 450 people at the Savoy, which was purely, purely vegan. And... 60% of the room wouldn't believe that I didn't put bacon in the starter. Um, what did you put in it? Well, we smoked onions. Oh, and we stuffed beautiful. smoked onions. Um, and we made yes. like a, it was a glaze that tasted almost like Marmite that went on the outside of them. Yeah. Um, so when they went out into the big banquet room, the whole room smelled of bacon sandwiches. <laughs> so, and it was good old Marmite. And it was. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't and a humble out of a jar, onion. but yeah. It and was, a humble onion. And a humble onion, yeah. Can I do anything? Um, I'm just sort of, we could, um, we could just use a cloth for these barges just to drain the like, oil off. Like I'd one? take that. That would be great. And then we're ready to serve, I think. So if you've got your yes. um, cauliflower rice to, to hand, if you want to pop a little bit in those bowls. I would love to. I might just do on one the, last little on squeeze. I might put your fennel, yeah. this fennel in, because it's so pretty and, be and not something I ever have at home. Yeah, um, I mean. Well, that's okay. So we said, Kim, okay, so I'm just thinking more flavor, flavor boosters of things that people might want to invest in or ask for presents. So we've got kimchi, we've got miso or the equivalent. We've got a great spice paste that's going to come in useful. Um, what about things they might already have? Have you been, have you, do you often get asked, I've got this in my cupboard, what can I do with it? I bet you get asked that a lot. Uh, that's a great way of not wasting, because we're not just talking about fresh veg, are we? We're talking no. about all the pastes that you've bought because you followed a recipe in a, yeah. A supplement and yeah. then you bought what? I mean, I, I mean, nothing springs to mind, but I think the thing people shouldn't be scared of is making a mistake. So yes. if they've got something, they should try it. Just try it out. Yeah. Taste it. If you taste it first, your brain might automatically tell you what it goes with. You might taste it and go, good shout. That, that's going to be amazing with a cauliflower. I mean, it's how chefs work. Do you um, think there are any rules? I mean, when it comes to pairings, because I feel like a lot of people will say, oh, no, no, you mustn't. You know, as someone that's self-taught and grew up, like, you know, I loved watching Ready, Steady, Cook because it was very much like, chuck it all in, yeah. you know, and yeah, have yeah. a go. And, and I feel that, um, obviously, I 
grew up watching River Cottage too. Yeah. Uh, but so did I. <laughs> did you? <laughs> yeah. Did well, you think you'd be I, here? I first saw Hugh on telly when I, I was uh, when I was just leaving school, and I like to remind him that on <laughs> every occasion I can. Um, but that was quick on the wild side, so we were quite shy yeah. slightly after yeah. that. But yeah, because um, it, it's fun and hands-on and all of those things yeah. that you want. Yeah, and it's exactly what food be. should be, which yeah. is fun and hands-on and make people yeah. happy. And, and then it's a, thing, a great thing to share. So apart um, from don't boil, you don't yeah. really—I don't feel you have any. No, I think flavour rules. I think do you? food. Food. I started training in the nineties, and food was still quite staid. And you know, if, if you cook French food, you cooked in a very certain yeah. way. And I think all those rules now have been looked at by chefs of sort of my, our generation, mm. and we we just question everything. Well, why? is that a rule yeah and that's quite silly so let's yeah. just do something completely different yeah and it's quite interesting saying you know being self-taught you you don't actually get that set of rules put into you right, no. at, the, right at the start which is great yeah because you if you get constricted at the start it's very difficult yeah. to break out of that well um, my mum filipino mum you know the, the greatest sin oh hello there the greatest sin was wasting so actually yeah. if you didn't try well you even try you had yeah. to eat it yeah so yeah yeah it didn't really matter yeah but obviously now i don't want my friends to just eat my food i, I want them to enjoy it what's yeah. going on here so coriander? this is just a bit of coriander yeah. and this is another example of using a, a whole plant so we've got the leaf uh, we, again green seeds rather than dried coriander seeds and they're a great uh, great little Thank thing you. to to eat as well and you eat those fresh and then we've got coriander flowers as well so coriander loves to flower in the summer which wow. which makes the leaves less useful actually you don't, you don't get so many leaves and uh, but the flowers are not only really pretty but they pretty. still have that perfume yeah uh, pure perfume hit coriander um so we're just gonna pop our romanesco curry on there and not that we needed any more flavor because this is huge amounts of gorgeous flavor and and but you can i know that i'll still be able to really taste the bed which is lovely mm. too i love yogurt for or, or like a nut butter swirl or a yeah. seed swirl for just a last minute when you think oh gosh is, is that a bit boring if you just want to show off at the last minute toasting up your spices like you did or frying off your spices and swirling them through a yogurt whether it's a coconut yogurt yeah. or a you know yeah your full fat dairy is always really nice isn't it I think uh, yogurt lends itself well to lots of things because again, it's a fermented product, isn't mm. it? So it, it's deeper in flavour to a lot of dairy, um, and it's quite interesting with the dairy. You can almost tell what the cow's been eating if you get the right dairy. If it's been on summer grass, you can you can taste it. When it goes into silage, you can taste it as well. Um, but yeah, you're right. A few a bit of herby yogurt or, or nutty yogurt or seedy yogurt, pumpkin yes. seeds through yogurt is, is one of my oh, favourites. Yeah, lovely. Um, you can have a lot of fun. I think if anyone's got any. Uh, packets or jars or anything of 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 seeds i think i, I try and you know your big thing is roasting can't go wrong with yeah, yeah, roasting yeah. uh roast. also we're talking about toasting so toasting up your spices anyway especially when they're a bit staler than you'd like yeah. same with nuts roasting of beans and chickpeas anything that 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 wants it there yeah. i uh did some cooking last weekend with my friends the rangoon sisters they make burmese food they were toasting up gram flowers and yeah. tossing it through salads which create this lovely sauce and was yeah. just amazing beautiful. yeah yeah it's so just I think toasting roasting yeah uh, it's just changing baking. it's just changing the properties in there by by introducing that heat you just it, you just times the flavor mm. by two every time mm. um it's a really really easy fix um so i think we're nearly nearly ready to eat oh, this looks to be honest stunning so, um, so we've worked our way through one whole vegetable, pretty much, with a little bit of help from veg from the garden. Um, so this is this is Beautiful. what we started with, yeah. Um, and right we've there. ended up something like this in a pretty un uncomplicated way. So Amazing! Okay. Can we delve in? Yeah. Well, let's have a try. So that is the uh, Romanesco stem the leaves into a bhaji and the florets into a beautiful curry. Yep, so that's, yeah, one whole vegetable in a bowl. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. So get that one out of the way and then... Okay, I'm gonna dive right in through the leaves. Yeah, <laughs> eating through a jungle. It's so big. <laughs> wow. Sorry, I'm not, am I gonna leave anything left for you? No, I'll, have, I'll have a little go at this one fine. then. So, Yum, thank you. Bruce. Beautiful. Pretty good, even if I say so myself. Yeah. <laughs> and the barge is delicious. lovely and crunchy, not too doughy on the inside. Really nice finish to them. Mm. Oh. I've got to say, your cauliflower rice makes it. That lemony, that lemoniness is beautiful running through there. So that is lovely, girl. Oh, 
Yum. Okay, everyone's got to try and find a Romanesco. If not broccoli, cauliflower. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, and so good. If you go to a, a local shop, you'll probably get one with more outsides as well. So um, we'll, we'll try and find a local farmer for that, that bit of it. And then we can do the whole dish in one go. I was going to say, I know friends that have um, not been able to find cauliflower with their leaves. And mm. they've asked their local shop if they could think about bringing mm. the leaves back. And, and now they're, they're very happy no, and they're no. paying similar prices. There's leaves not going to waste. Yeah, I mean, more the, inspiration. And the farmer gets a better deal because he gets paid for his whole vegetable rather than just the centre of it. So Absolutely, it's that's better. very important. It's better for everybody. Better for everyone. Win-win for everyone. And this is a win-win dish. Brilliant, love it. Okay, what's next then? Okay, we'll so tidy up and we'll carry on. We're going to have a tidy up and then we're going to move on to our chutney. Mm. All right. Okay, so we're going to make a little chutney now, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Any any fruit chutney. Yeah, this is a bit of everything chutney, I think we should call it. Um, and this is, this is great for some, some, some firmer fruits that may be left over in your fridge. Uh, we're always guilty of maybe having that wrinkly apple in the fruit bowl or that, that pear that's slightly gone over. But it's also good for unripe fruit as well. So if you grow your own and you've got some yes. fruit that hasn't quite ripened up, by cooking it into a chutney, you'll, you'll, you'll speed that process along. So yes. it's a really good way to avoid throwing anything in the bin. Underripe, overripe, bit bashed. Yeah, our bashed is absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, we, should never, we should never worry about cooking with bashed fruit. It might not be that night, nice to eat raw, but it should certainly end up in a saucepan somewhere along the line. Mm. And also, if you're at the shop and you see, you know, if, if, if you're like a bit freer and easier, you haven't got your heart set on something specific and you see a bit of bashed fruit, and it's on for a deal, absolutely. Yeah. It might turn out to be the best dinner you've ever had. Well, I mean, I'm always up for a deal. Um, <laughs> my mum is Scottish, so, you know. I know I love my mum is Filipino. I love a deal, yeah. yeah. So it's not even called a deal, it's just that's it's just food. Yeah, it's just what you buy, isn't it, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I think, you know, there's no such thing as seconds for me with, with no. grading produce. It's all, it all has a great use. And um, interestingly, the, the farms that we buy from around here, the organic farms, I just buy everything they produce. So even if it is a bit marked or, or bruised, I feel it's my responsibility as a, as a chef to make sure that, that that veg gets put to, to good use. And I think as a consumer, yep. that, should, that should definitely not put you off. No, um, no. Because really, the more we complain about less than perfect fruit, the more we are actually playing quite an important part in the role of food waste by demanding perfection and actually looking for them looking for the most charming and interesting shapes and sizes. I mean, it's all going to taste the same, isn't it? It's going to be absolutely delicious, and it's, it's our job to, to put it to good use. Yeah, I think, actually, um, veg that, that, that looks a bit weird uh, and a bit more interesting actually tastes better because it's probably more from a heritage variety of crop. Um, the, the uniform sort of size parsnips and carrots that we get are just grown for their success, not their flavour. They're grown yeah. to be the right shape, the right size, grow, f grow quickly, uh, and fit into bags and boxes on the sh supermarket shelf. So I, I tend to find that the, the veg you grow in your back garden, for example, it never looks like the stuff you get in the shop because it's grown right. naturally and it You've tastes You've seen amazing. my veg. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really yeah. proud of it. But I am actually like, yeah, drawn towards the different shapes. I haven't even shown you my crazy shaped um, aubergines yet. No. Um, but you're, you're right, absolutely. I don't know when we got so uh, set on one particular way of looking. But actually, it has been really pleasing to see, um, you know, you were cooking with a yellow carrot. You've got your yellow courgette there. You know, the good old-fashioned purple ca carrots. Ca yeah, the purple the carrots. The OG carrots. Yeah. The, Thanks for those pears. The original carrots. Yeah. So you know the story about why they're orange? Oh, I do. Yeah, so just to... Go on, tell, tell, just, it, tell well, it to everyone. It, they, they were just designed um, for a birthday present from the King of Holland. And the that's family it. is the orange family, so they that's made orange carrots. So, um, that is a great fact for a, for a Zoom quiz. It is, they yeah. start again. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we've got in here, we added uh, vinegar, apple cider vinegar, a bit of honey. Um, British Honey Week is coming up, actually. Yeah, so... Um, your lovely pears. Could be apples, as you say, could be absolutely anything. Yeah, plums are really good in this chutney as well. Um, even soft fruit like raspberries will, will go into a chutney. If you, if, you, well, if you grow your own raspberries, you tend to end up with a bowl that's slightly overripe and, and bashed. Um, and obviously, chutneys are not just for cheese lovers, though we are cheese no. lovers. Yes. Why, why are we making chutney? What would you put it in? I mean, I'd put it, I love it in a gravy. I'll put a spoonful of chutney yeah. in a gravy. So, I mean, chutney is a great thing to, again, liven other foods up. Yeah. I mean, it's packed full of that flavor of, um, of, uh, 
it has the flavor enhancers in it, the vinegar the and the sweetener that we put in honey. Uh, you can use sugar if you, if you so desire. Yeah. Um, and those, those flavors, um, called a gastric sugar and, and sugar and vinegar together, and it's used as a classic flavor enhancer. So you would Is that again, a gastric. A gastric, it's called. Um, and that is the thing you put in tomato soup to make it taste like Heinz. So, <laughs> Beep! Yeah, yeah, Don't yeah, say that. <laughs> that good old fashioned, the, the, the flavors that like soothe our childhood wounds. Yes. Right? Those is, comforting yeah. flavors. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, but yeah, I mean, chutney goes in right, into sandwiches with, with salads. Oh, uh, yeah. Again, like say with cheeses, uh, all of those things. Uh, and the last touch we're going to put in there is we're going to put a bit of a chili in there. So um, should we play chili roulette and just guess which one we're going to put but in? I'm scared of what you told me about that, that man, Adam. Yeah, that yeah. Hit, so that gardener, gardener Adam. Yeah. I think okay. this one this one's, uh, looks pretty good. Um, and do you, do you de-seed? I never de-seed. No, I never de-seed. It's totally pointless. It's where all the flavour and heat is. Because you could use two chilies and de-seed them, or you could just use one chilli with the exactly. seed in. Yeah, no, there's right? nothing wrong with chilli seeds. I think the unfortunate bit about being a chef, if you're going to use a chilli, you have to try it before it yes. goes in anything, otherwise you make something completely inedible. So <laughs> it's fallen to me to try this one. So we'll, we'll all watch and a check your bit, sweat levels. A little bit taken from the fat end of the chilli, just rubbed against the tip of your tongue will give you a good, uh -huh. good in indication. Uh -huh. And you see I haven't collapsed on the floor choking, no. uh, but it is quite spicy. I'm is it? Yeah, I'm going to Okay, give, well, yeah. how much are you so putting in? We're going to put about half of that chilli into, okay. into the pot. And that's Can I tell you what my mum would do right now with the other half? Not yeah. make her famous chilli sauce. She'd get a little bit of vinegar. Have I got yeah. any left? She'd get, a, she'd get a jar, she'd get yeah. a bit of vinegar, some salt. She'd smoosh a garlic into yeah. it and she would just make garlic vinegar. Lovely. And then with um, any kind of Filipino soup, noodle soup or an anything, just that tang and heat is lovely yeah. together. No, it's we amazing that. that sort of stuff. So oh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> hand you those. <laughs> That's in. Gosh, this is looking quite beautiful, the pear in the um, yeah. tomato. So My mum's friend always makes me chutneys. Um, so I've, I've probably not been making them enough myself, but back thinking about spices as well, your merguez spice that you mentioned would be amazing in this, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, chutney's a real blank canvas, to be honest. You can, you, you should really experiment with it and just throw, mm -hmm. throw whatever you like in there. So um, we're saying gravy, soups, obviously your cheese, sandwiches. Absolutely. Um, and then when, it, when you run out of brown sauce, yeah. you throw it in the blender and it's brown sauce. Lovely. I mean, that's oh, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. So um, Saving on plastic too, not buying another plastic bottle of something. Exactly. Okay, so. can we do some quick fire? Talk us through some more veg, uh, uh, you know, your, your average veg, because we tend to be, I know lots of us are very much interested in seasonal purchasing, but, yeah. but you know, the winters are long and dark and grey <laughs> yeah. and, and we do end up sometimes that with, with that you know, here's another turnip. I'm just thinking that feeling of, gosh, not another parsnip. No, thank you. We are lucky to have yeah. the food. But what, what would you do to, say, your root area, your, your parsnips, your turnips, your celeriacs, your swedes, which often we run out of steam for, don't we? Apart from mash. Okay, we all know we love a, a, a swede mash and a yeah, parsnip I mean, mash. What else could we do? I mean, it's interesting mentioning celeriacs. Again, that's a, a vegetable that eats really well raw. As long as you, as long as you yes. batten it down, it, we make a really nice uh, hazelnut, so chopped hazelnuts, celeriac and apples together, just dressed with lemon juice and a little olive oil. And that's it. As, as long as you dress it about 30 minutes before you need it, that celeriac starts to soften yep. ever so slightly and, you, and you've got that mm. a beautiful slaw on there. And if you're lucky enough to get the tops of your celeriac, you can chop some of that as a herb through as well and you get that really beautiful celery flavour from, yes. from all of that. So, um, Is there anything, because of all the veg, the celeriac has got the the thickest, gnarliest. Is there anything we can do with that, do you reckon? What, the skin? Yeah. Yeah, so there is. Is there? Yeah. Okay, um, so I, I've got to confess, I've been putting that in my compost and not doing yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it? you do have to work with it. You have to, you have to dry it <laughs> out. Needs a little bit of luck. Okay, yeah, so you dry have it to dehydrate it and blend it and turn it to celeriac powder. Um, is oh, the way to do it. I might bring you my peel. But yeah, it's it's <laughs> a long winded it's a long winded process of doing it. If it's if it's cleaned really well, it will boil into soups. Um, but you need to give it a really good thing because mm -hmm. it will maintain okay. a bit of the, the dirt from the ground. So, on raw, it, so we can make some some, uh, some remoulade or a, uh, apple and celeriac slaw yeah. type vibe. What about with parsnips? What would you do with parsnips? So one of our most well well received parsnip dishes is we actually beer batter them. Wow. So we, so we lightly lightly steam. Is that for the vegans? That's for everyone. That's for everyone. That is yeah. So we steam them very lightly just to just to start cooking them ever so yep. slightly into flour. A beer batter made with a, a light beer, a nice fizzy beer. Yeah. And then you dip it in, deep fry them, and serve it with a bit of curry salt and some garlic mayonnaise. Maybe your squash aioli. Maybe the squash aioli. Oh yeah, my gosh, absolutely. that's amazing. And everybody is blown away by that. I bet. Yeah, meat eaters and, and vegetarians alike. So that's a really nice, funky way of doing it. Yes. It's a nice, nice thing for like canapes and parties. Oh um, my God, to, that, to that sounds well. amazing. So I love that. Okay, what about 
um, okay, carrots. I feel like people will end up with a wrinkly carrot or are we often buy a bag of carrots or a bunch. What, what could we do? Apart from a fritter, apart from a bhaji. Yeah, I mean, carrots, they do make amazing soups at any point. I, yeah. mean, that, I mean, that is one of my favorite soups through the winter is, is a carrot soup. It doesn't mm. have to be carrot and coriander. Um, no, like but we could change it up by toasting off different seeds exactly. for on top and spices, yeah, right? Exactly. A bit of chili in there, some preserved lemon, um, a bit of nigella in the soup as well. Always works really, really, really well. And actually, just to turn into to a puree for, for dinner, yeah. um, if it is a bit wrinkly, just, just simmer it down in a little bit of butter mm. or, or some olive oil and a touch of water. And then you blend it together. If it's olive oil, it emulsifies through and turns into a really creamy mm. uh, puree as well. So. Um, Carrots, if they do go a bit over, that's certainly not the end of their life. And if they're really, really wrinkly, they can still go in the stockpot. I mean, there's still, Absolutely. There's still, there's still an out for them in the stockpot. So yep. you should never really waste them. And I, and I think something to say as well is if, 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 if we don't have, if one doesn't have enough time to just, you know, it's all easy, isn't it? Being like, just whip up a stock. I, I keep mine in a reusable baggie. Um, my, all my veg scraps, chuck it in the freezer, and then when I've got the motivation to make a veg stock, yeah, I'm on it. Do absolutely. you do that? Yeah, I do, and then I tend to sieve it off, reduce it down, and put it into ice cube trays and freeze it. So I've got Excellent. my own stock cubes to take out one at a time. Excellent. Yeah, so, nice yeah. one. Yeah. That is like a real satisfying move, isn't it? When yeah. you, you know when you've got an ice cube tray of stock, you're like, okay, because yeah, you can make anything delicious, can't yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, the st good stocks are the base of so many different things. Mm. Uh, certain things you literally can't make without good stock. Mm. So it, to have it to hand will make your evening cooking back from work so much easier. Mm. And most stock cubes are packed full of salt as well. So if, yeah. you, can, if you can avoid that, that's, that's an amazing, it's a great so step towards good food. It's a good investment, isn't it? That yeah. little bit of time, put a nice podcast on. Yeah. Put, put a British Library episode of something on, make some stock. All right, get off, I'm about ready. What do you reckon? Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, because we can always cook down that sauce a little bit more, can't we? Or add a little bit more or less. Smells amazing. Yep, so I'm just gonna pop it in the KitchenAid now and give it a blend. So that was our pears, that was our chili, that was our toma uh, squashy tomatoes, vinegar, honey, a uh, bit of garlic as well, right? Yeah, and there's one ingredient that we do need, just a bit of salt if you wanna yep. pop that over. Nice Brilliant. bit of flaky sea salt going in there just to give it that last boost of flavor. On with the lid and... There we go. Okay, now that's blended up. So we can see we've got mm. a bit of a better consistency on that. So, a little taste. pop it in a bowl for you. Oof. And is it cool that's gonna solidify and, and thicken up, isn't it, a little bit? Yeah, and also uh, give, it a, give it a couple of days in the fridge. Oh, um, that's excellent. Yeah, it's really good. Um, oh, so good. Get all the veg in there and that honey coming through. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, a few weeks in the fridge and that will get just better and better and mm, better, won't it? So. Mm. And, and, a, and a great reason to save all your jars and clean them up. Exactly. Uh, Angela, come and have the vinegar queen. See what she thinks of our chutney. I can't wait to try yeah. it. Oh, have a, have a little... Um, what can I grab? Here, look. Have a bit of courgette. Thank you. <laughs> great way to eat more <laughs> yeah, veg. Double courgette action there. That is completely lovely. It's a great little sauce, isn't it? That was so brilliant. I feel like I learned so much. You were so great. I really hope you all learned loads as well and really enjoyed it. Plenty more to come on the British Library food season over the next couple of weeks. We've got Tom Kerridge and Ken Hom, Fuchsia Dunlop, loads of amazing people. But for now, that's it from River Cottage and the British Library food season. <laughs>